Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening uh, to you, um, depending on what, where in the world you're joining us today. And welcome to uh, the PagHub's latest uh, packaging innovation uh, webinar. My name is Paul Jenkins. I'm Managing Director of UK Packaging Innovation Consultancy for PackUp. Again, joined today by my colleague and Technical Director, Barrington Pamplin, who will be chairing the Q&A towards the end of this session. And delighted to be joined by Ian Beresford, Head of Marketing and Development Tapes for Accentra Tapes. Um, Accentra have done their second major consumer research study, Packaging Resolved, the continued consumer demand for packaging improvements. So Ian will be taking us through some of the, the headline um, insights and results from their survey um, halfway through today's session. So what we will cover over the next 55 minutes or so is the following. So very uh, familiar format for, for the regulars uh, that have joined us today. Um, very short introduction to the pack up and the innovation zone. Uh, we're focusing today on um, pack functionality, which ties in very nicely with Centra Tape's um, packaging insight piece. So we're going to break the pack up session into two parts. Uh, so making life easy. So pack functionality innovations part one. We will then be joined by Ian, uh, who will be talking through their um, their market research, consumer research uh, analysis and results. And then we're back to me again, where we'll be discussing some more um, PAC functionality uh, innovations from our Innovation Zone database. And we'll finish with details of our next event. Um, as always, get your questions in. There is a Q&A section at the bottom, I think, um, of, of the display. So you can uh, post any questions to Ian uh, that you would like there, and we'll cover them at the end. Um, you will get a link to this webinar recording post event as always and you might like to follow the pack up on our YouTube channel um, where we, where we load all our all our video content so youtube youtube.com forward slash the pack up so a minute on the pack up um, four main areas of service uh, technical support and project management uh, Barry and his team uh, are happy to take on projects large and small for uh, companies of all sizes to help them with on their packaging journey. Uh, the packable to do events, uh, not so much physical at the moment, but we do hope to be back live um, late 20, late this year, early next year. Um, but obviously, we're moving uh, have, or have moved towards uh, webinars as a, as a way of um, engaging and, and 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 speaking to a to a packaging audience. Paul, it's, it's Barry. Uh, can I just interject? Your screen is not displaying correctly. We've got a preview of your next slide up. Oh, OK. A new version of, your, of the main yeah, slide. Yeah, thank you for that. I will um, very quickly change the share. But thank you for that. How's that? That's better. OK, thank you for that. Always a gremlin in there somewhere. So I talked about events, um, innovation zone, packaging database, and, and also reports. So we're just about to launch a global packaging trends compendium. We've done other reports uh, over the last few months. So innovation zone database, um, searchable and easy to use uh, resource, nearly 4,600 packaging initiatives. We upload 20 new innovations every week from concept to in-market launch. Very much a global view. We track packaging, um, the word packaging in 15 different languages. So we're, we're picking up innovations uh, really from around the world. And there's an excellent way of uh, keeping your teams up to speed, uh, keeping yourself up to speed uh, in terms of what's going on and what your competition may be doing uh, for inspiration and idea generation. Just the number of uh, the um, brands, suppliers, and um, retailers that are currently uh, members of our database. So we talked about um, the pack functionality section that we're gonna be doing today. So really this is um, one of nine innovations that, uh, that, that we've, we've tracked in our recent global packaging trends compendium uh, called Making Life Easy. Um, packaging that has added functionality that is easy to use 
and makes life easier for consumers continues to be popular. Um, and we're continuing to see many examples coming through the innovation funnel. Um, with, there's such a lot of development on and, and focus on sustainability. It's, it's really good that brands and retailers can still deliver pack formats and solutions that meet an unmet functional need to make the consumer experience easier and more pleasurable. Um, we're seeing you know, examples of packaging reduction as a, as a primary, plastic production, uh, plastic reduction being a, a primary focus for, for many brands and retailers. And there's signs that this is starting to have an impact on, on pack functionality in the market. I tracked a couple of examples for example, a couple of examples uh, recently uh, where, for example, the resealability has been taken out of, of cheese packaging to, to achieve um, a pack reduction target. So uh, these are isolated examples, um, but maybe just a sign of things to come, who knows, so we'll keep a track on that. However, the worldwide aging marketplace means, you know, really a, an increasing need for packaging that is easy to open and close and easy to use. So over to the first um, tranche of examples. Uh, as always, um, these are not an endorsement of best practice. Uh, it's important we feel at the Pack Hub that we reflect what's going on so you can make informed choices about your packaging strategies. So um, these are, these are uh, examples that are, are coming through the innovation funnel rather than necessarily best practice endorsements. Um, we're seeing a lot of innovations around COVID-19, as you would expect. Um, the last year has been uh, unlike any other. Um, and, and packaging hygiene, for example, has been something that has been a, a, a increased awareness and heightened awareness of that. So we're, we're seeing innovations related to COVID-19 coming through. Um, and this is a, one such example. So Unilever has been working with their agency, Malang Lo Mishra, uh, on a collaboration on innovative packaging for their Lifebuoy brand hand sanitizers, hand sanitizers for the Vietnamese market. The new pack designs are to encourage more consumer usage of sanitizers uh, do, during the Vietnamese um, holiday period. The use of hand washing soap has become normalized uh, by consumers all around the world really due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but the practice of using hand sanitizers it lags behind due to the inconvenience of carrying a bottle around as well as consumers forgetting to take one with them. I know the, the, the small times I ever go out of the house, I always forget to take my hand sanitizer. Um, a small bottle can also get lost in a, in a disorder of a, of a bag. So an accessible and an on the go hand sanitizer has therefore been developed as an effective way to increase convenience and reduce infection risk. The result is a, a keychain format uh, that turns Lifebuoy hand sanitizer into a handy and user-friendly uh, personal accessory that can be conveniently tagged onto one's handbag or belt. Um, you know, this is not a life-changing uh, innovation. We've, we've seen these kind of things before, but just kind of a quite a fleet of foot uh, example of, of, of putting the right pack format to the, to the consumers to ensure that um, consumption is, 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 is uh, used a lot. So, um, and in fact, so much so that the new format is apparently top five uh, in the best selling items in two of the leading Vietnamese e-commerce channels. Next up, we have a, a new solution that's been introduced that helps consumers transport small quantities of personal care products uh, on the go. The leak proof refillable packaging is made from recycled ocean plastic and offers a reusable alternative to single use packaging. Uh, the Montana-based Cadence brand solution can carry a variety of items such as shampoo, face wash, makeup, medicines, etc. Um, conventional travel size containers for decanting supplies uh, are often single use and difficult to clean. Cadence is a series of reusable and refillable hexagonal capsules that can be used to store all kinds of products. Uh, it, this apparently took 200 uh, prototypes were created before the final solution was ready for market. Uh, the cadence capsules are 100% leak proof uh, with magnetic sides that hold them together for easier storage. Uh, they are also interchangeable magnetic labels that can be placed on top of the capsules so that the consumer knows what's inside each one. When the capsules reach the end of their useful life, uh, apparently they can be sent back for regrinding re and reforming into new products. 
and then each capsule has a 44 mil capacity and is available in three colors. Next up is from Easy Snap Technology. They're a, a Modena, Italy based business, has made a, a big step forward with the announcement of a collaboration with Open Book Extracts to use their innovative one handed Easy Snap solution to dispense um, cannabinoids. Um, this solution will also be used for air travel as well, when people can fly, uh, as Delta Airlines have selected the Easy Snap single dose solution for their sanitizing gel for passenger use. So yet again, another example of COVID-19 impacting the fast-growing um, sanitizing gel market. Isenap Technologies semi-rigid single-dose packs for liquid and creamy substances are designed to open with the use of a single hand. Uh, access to the product is done by folding it in half and it can hold liquids up to 30 mil. There are no tabs to tear or parts to discard. The whole front and back service can be designed with high impact branding. Easy Snap can be used to open packs in the food, cosmetic, chemical, and medical device markets. And no information on the recyclability of these uh, pack formats were available at the time of writing. Next up is a Dutch based uh, startup called Naturally Tasty. Uh, that develops, produces and sells sustainable uh, food products. Uh, the brand is reported to be the first in the Dutch market to introduce a new organic soup range with packaging in which the name of the soup is written in Braille. Naturally Tasty is targeting obviously blind shoppers and those with severe visual impairments. Uh, the Braille on the new packaging comes in, uh, they've got a real challenge for the Dutch market because obviously um, having to do it in, in Dutch, French and German. Um, Natural Tasty plans to make uh, various donations to institutions for the visually impaired as part of the as part of the program. Um, it's not clear if all the brand's range of products will make the change. And of course, when you instigate something like uh, Braille on, on the packaging, you're kind of setting a stall out really to, uh, if it's good enough for, for soup, it's good enough for the rest of your range. So, and they're really sort of setting, setting themselves um, out to, to, to provide that for across the whole of their range. Next up, with the majority of packaging innovation focused rightly on sustainability, uh, it can be easy to forget that improving pack functionality, as I said at the beginning, can also be an important reason to implement change. Um, UK snack brand Kettle Foods uh, launched the reclosed tape from uh, Accentra Tapes, no less. Uh, the solution allows consumers to reseal the multi-portion pack and keep the product fresh. Uh, we had this pack uh, on display at the Packaging Innovation Show. Uh, a year ago and was very well received um, the, by, by, by visitors to our stand. Uh, the eight colored uh, printed reclose tape also delivers lots of shelf impact uh, to interrupt the shopper journey in store. Reclose is applied to the existing vertical form fill and seal packaging lines alongside Accenture's applicators. The tape incorporates a, a finger lift area that runs alongside both sides um, to make it straightforward to lift away from the pack. It can be resealed and reclosed up to 10 times to satisfy the consumption habits of snackers. The reclose tape gives uh, snack brand owners the opportunity to also cost effectively add on pack promotions without the need to change the existing packaging artwork. So really a, a journey around the world. So we've done uh, Vietnam, we've done UK, we've done Netherlands, and here we have uh, uh, an, an example from the Chinese market. And it's fair to say that the growth of the e-commerce market in China uh, continues to outpace uh, bricks and mortar sales. Uh, it is in fact the largest online marketplace in the world with an estimated volume of nearly $2 trillion in 2019, which is more than three times the size of the next biggest, which is the US market. The growth has meant that sustainability has become an increasing challenge. And many companies are now introducing packaging solutions that tackle environmental issues as well as ever-growing costs associated with the packaging. So here we have a, um, a zipper carton box, uh, as opposed to conventional carton boxes. This easy to use solution does not use adhesive tape, making it much easier to pack as well as open. I don't know about you, but whenever I get a, a box um, delivered to me, um, the, the packaging tape is often a frustrating process in terms of having to get get out um, your scissors and, and, and really sort of clip away at the, um, at the tape. So uh, to, to have a, a 
a tape free solution obviously makes the pack easier to open. The business has thought outside the box with a, a, re a redefined solution that has a zipper attached to the carton. Uh, this also improves the consumer unpacking experience and gets rid of costly and less environmentally friendly uh, adhesive tape. Um, so that's being tested on Alabama Logistical Arm. Um, has offered the packaging to more than 500 sellers on a business to consumer online retail site, Tmall. The zipper boxes are interestingly reported to cost twice as much as conventional packaging, but sellers that opt to use them get extra promotion on the Tmall website. So that's an interesting way of getting a new innovation into, into market. Now, uh, continuing the journey around the world, we uh, hit the, uh, the Indian market. So um, McDonald's India West and South has launched a new packaging format that has been created to make their products more inclusive. The new burger packaging was, has been designed to coincide with International Day of Persons with Disabilities, which was earlier uh, last month. The aim is to make the McDonald's experience enjoyable for all and has been created over months of development. The current packaging typically requires customers to use both their hands to enjoy the food, which makes it difficult for those with upper limb disabilities. The new Eat Call um, pack addresses the challenge to ensure that everyone can bite into their favorite burgers easily. The new packaging will be available across all McDonald's restaurants in West and South India. And the idea for the packaging came from Indian Integrated Marketing Communication Agency, DDBM, DDB Mudra. Last uh, innovation before we hear from Ian. So this is a U US luxury accessories brand, uh, Judith Liber, and they've introduced a more customizable fragrance with a difference. The More Is More perfume brand offering for women features multiple scents and could be mixed and matched in one innovative and distinctive bottle. More, and more Is More incorporates a unique customizable bottle design, which is possible to switch from one to seven fragrances just one click of the pack. Consumers can build their own signature fragrance and select one, two or three scents by toggling sliders on the bottle to make a multitude of aroma combinations. This offers the opportunity for personalization throughout the day, a benefit that the brand recognizes would be welcomed by consumers. The one of a kind bottle allows consumers to switch between fragrances and mix on the spot to create aromas to meet their mood. More and more comes in a 75 mil bottle and retails for $125, which is about 93 UK pounds. Okay, so delighted to be joined by, by Ian Beresford, uh, Head of Marketing and Development for Tapes for Accentra Tapes. And as I said at the beginning, he's going to be looking at Accentra's second major consumer research study, uh, Packaging Resolved, the continued consumer demand for packaging improvements. Hi Ian, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good, thank you. Are you able to share your screen? Yes, one second. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just drop it into presentation mode. Not yet. How's that? Hi Ian, I can see it. It's, it's Barry. It looks fine to me. OK, that's just I can't see it, but that's fine. Over to you, Ian. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for your interest um, to see our survey results. Um, you know, we're delighted to be able to share these insights um, that we've gathered and how consumer opinion on packaging has, has evolved since our first study on this back in 2013. Um, I think it's really important to say that, you know, con being consumer can customer orient, orientated is critical to any business. Um, I mean that, you know, the end customer interacts with and gets the benefit of the good and bad packaging is who we must care deeply about satisfying. And this is really all about sharing what we've, um, uh, what we've learned over these last few years. Um, I'll uh, just apologize for my photo. I was going to go on video, but um, obviously COVID's slightly, uh, the lockdown has impacted me and that photo is from about 15 years ago. So I now look a little bit more um, like a backwoodsman with a beard and long hair. So um, I haven't gone on video today. So 
Um, in 2013, um, Central launched its first quantitative research to understand consumers' views on packaging. Um, and it was clear from that um, that there was a large high dissatisfaction with packaging. And you might say, well, why is that important? But consumer dissatisfaction really does negatively impact um, the repurchase decisions and the net promoter score um, around that. And after all that hard work um, that we've put into it and getting them to buy the product in the first place, it seems like we should do something about it. So we'll just take you on a journey of what was the 2013 results and then what is it in 2020? And let's see if that's changed. So firstly, to recap on the key learnings from 2013. Um, number one was around the frustration um, with packaging. Um, number two was around difficult to open. And number three was around too much waste in packaging. And at the time, getting, uh, getting into packaging was the major challenge for over half the respondents, um, with over 80% highlighting annoyance with packaging, annoyance when- Ian, Ian apologies, it's, it's Barry. Um, we're not seeing your slides click over, so I don't know if that's something that Paul needs to, to sort out. We're just okay. seeing your opening slide still. Really? Okay. Thank you. Um, let me start again. Oh, that's much better, Ian. We can see your screen now. Yeah, that's working now. Okay, good. Fabulous. Thank Ian, you. it might just be worth very quickly going through your first slides just so that people can see them. Okay. Um, so that was that was just um, some nice pictures on that one. So here's here's into some of the stats now. Um, so, um, yeah, as I said, at the time, getting into packaging uh, was the major challenge with over half the respondents. Um, and over 80% highlighting this annoyance when opening the pack. Um, so I led to this, this statistic of 85% of people identified some frustration with packaging. So really key driver back in 2013. Um, products that featured heavily amongst consumers' pet hates also tied in with this, with things like clamshell style, um, hard sealed plastic packaging being mentioned as infuriating throughout. So there were a lot of emotive words, a lot of um, emotional words that were used um, in these in the survey back in 2013. Um, but look, don't take my word for it. Here's what um, here's what they said. And there's no way you can open this without one of these. Like, sort of look on the back here, I can't find one. Get scissors to cut through everything and like really cut round. Um, and it actually becomes really sharp when I've cut myself on it. And I'm probably not the only person, it really, really annoys me. It's no good to have a product in a packaging that you cannot open unless you have an external aid. Call it scissors, call it mouth and teeth, and then you bring your teeth and because you're putting in fake in teeth. So yeah, my least favourite packaging is clamshells. So a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of emotive words in there. Um, so that led us to, to launch our initiative of Packaging Resolved, um, focusing on the key themes of open, close, inform and protect. So we, we um, established that the perfect pack was one that could be opened easily, could be resealed, providing a functional store for the contents. It would communicate the brand and the contents to the consumer. And while doing all of that, it would be protecting the goods from damage, keeping them fresh and helping to avoid um, counterfeiting. So some key statistics on there um, that we kind of um, 
still live by within our business today and drives our, our value proposition to the market. So very important for us and all packaging. So have things moved on? So we thought in 2020, let's see what's changed. Are consumers happier with packaging than in 2013? So at the end of last year, we sought feedback from a thousand members of the public and from across the UK and the results I'm sharing with you today and also for a lot more detail, um, there's a white paper that's getting published on our website um, as well for you to download. Um, so from identifying the packs that frustrate and delight us to understanding the features that consumers value, I'll just take you through um, some of the insights around that um, and obviously the role it, it plays in our lives. So key, key headline was uh, frustration was 85% down to 70% in, uh, in 2020. So nearly a 20% improvement. Um, and really some examples of that. So e-commerce um, seems to be publicly leading the way on this. And it's great to see, you know, the big online retail brands like Amazon's frustration-free packaging um, being pushed out there. And that's driving a lot of behavior within the packaging market um, um, to, to adapt to that because it's all, at the end of the day, it's all about the consumer choice and the consumer's repurchasing. Um, there's also other moves along simpler multi-use packaging that are likely to have helped as well. Indeed, it's also possible um, that consumers are seeing more value in packaging, and this is helping to drive further improved response. Um, for example, the increasing importance placed on packaging functionality to protect from damage, um, to improve hygiene for the consumer, um, and to, uh, to pro provide more tamper evidence, and we'll look more into that uh, later on in the presentation. But while I've seen an improvement with nearly three quarters of consumers expressing a frustration with packaging, there's obviously still plenty to do. Number two, difficult to open. Um, so this was 81% and down to 57%. So there are still difficulties getting into packs and it topped the agenda in the last survey when people were asked to select uh, their frustrations with, uh, with packaging, which were their highest frustrations. And the results demonstrate that this, uh, this frustration still continues, but it's, uh, it's much improved. It's still important to consumers with 50% of those surveyed selecting difficult to open as the top frustration and 48% saying they had to use knives and other tools to get into the packs. Um, and this compared with 61% and 69% respectively in 2013. So an improvement, but again, still more to do. So that improvement, the improving picture overall, and when we look at, is interesting when we look at the analysis by age, and then this decrease actually disappears with 66% of those aged over 55 saying it was difficult to open, it was still a top three concern, whilst 59% highlighting the need for use of knives and other tools. So age really does matter when we're looking at these, uh, this analysis and these statistics. So accessibility challenges with packaging therefore still drive a key need to improve packaging. Um, so we heard before about um, the high negative emotions that packaging can bring out in consumers. Well, let's flip that and here are some of the positives. Uh, now I'm going to try to open this it is cheddar biscuits, cheese biscuits. Uh, now comes with this easy open tab, which I assume you just pull this and it should tear it round. That's what I imagine anyway. I haven't used it before. Yeah, there we go. That's very simple. That lifts up really easily. Um, and then because it's got the red sort of tougher piece on it, it just literally unfolds. I'm not very, I'm not very old, I'm 40. Um, I do have very slight um, rheumatism in my joints. Ah, my goodness. Now that I'm really shocked about. That was really easy to open. Definitely, definitely. I actually came with all my props here to show you how I open jars if it wasn't going to open. So I use a rubber glove or a knife to get under. But no, that is really, really easy to open. Oh, gosh, that was simple. Absolutely simple. And it's popped actually. I don't know what that is, but that is really, really good. Really, really good. Yeah. 
So I have to say, on a, on a personal level, that makes me feel really good about the impact of well-designed packaging and that sort of the thrill, the excitement that people get from opening a package and uh, being able to use the goods inside in the way they want. And those marketeers amongst us know all about the, the benefits ladder and that emotional benefit has been the most powerful and is right at the top. And that, that powerful impact of emotion drives can drive positively um, consumer event, consumer purchase decisions. So we're about halfway through the slides now and, uh, and we're on to sustainability. Um, I bet, uh, bet you'd never thought that would come up in a, in a survey um, in, these, in these current climates, but yeah, sustainability, here we are. Um, and within that, um, while openability was the key issue in 2013 and continues to very significantly feature in this survey, the top spot has now changed. Um, with too much packaging now being the number one frustration with 58% of consumers. And they highlighted this issue and it was an, an increase from 49% in 2013. We really can see that this, uh, this issue of, of over packaging, too much packaging is a key issue for consumers. So what's driven this change? Uh, well, one key dynamic um, from our research is showing that obviously e-commerce um, is a major part and has grown and impacted across all our lives, particularly in the last 12 months. Um, the value of online retail sales in the UK was around 40 billion. And by, by 2020, um, it's exploded to just under 100 billion. So a massive in, increase in the amount of e-commerce that we're, um, we're purchasing. And this dramatic change in the retail environment has seen demands on packaging alter significantly. Uh, the need to protect goods throughout the supply chain and the move from a traditional retail environment to one of items being delivered direct to our homes has meant that packaging has changed. No one wants to receive a broken item, but then what to do with all the packaging around it? You know, what do I need to do with this? So many consumers were frustrated by this and see the protective packaging as excessive. The term wrap range, wrap rage, now encompasses not only frustration with getting into packs, but also with over packaging with websites and social media shares highlighting the issues for others to see. When asked to think about goods delivered to our homes, and when we drilled into this further, 56% said that there is too much packaging and 40% highlighted there is a lot of waste. The demand for state sustainability is often driving this frustration with over packaging and items that are over packaged are seen as wasteful and bad for the environment, which reflects, which reflects negatively on brands. Devel developing appropriate packaging for goods is essential for brands. For example, corrugated box manufacturers are providing optimized packaging solutions, working with packaging lines of retailers to improve the design and remove the unnecessary fillers and space around items within boxes. So we then went further into sustainability and we asked people to rank seven packaging sustainability topics in order of importance and recyclability at over 40% came top by far. 43% of respondents named recyclability as a packaging frustration. Consumers do not know what to do with it. They don't want to bin it, but they don't know what to do. So that feeling of guilt and annoyance grows. For consumers, recyclability is proving to be a key sustainability issue and leading to a demand for packaging that is easy to recycle. Programmes such as the Blue Planet are impacting the consumer choices, with 88% of people reporting in a recent survey that after watching, they would change their lifestyle. As an issue, the general concept of packaging recyclability is easily understood by consumers. With the benefits of the materials contained within the circular economy, maximising efficiencies and minimising waste. So as a concept, they like it. However, when it comes to making choices on what to do with different packaging materials, this gets more complex. For example, the wide differences in local authorities curbside collections, making it confusing to, for consumers, and it's not easy to recycle certain pack formats, 
even though they can be effectively dealt with. Really what's our key takeaway, key takeaway from this is sustainability must be at the core of all good packaging and an important driver in consumer decision making. Therefore, it's essential for brands as well to consider that, whilst also companies are quite rightly prioritising reducing their own impact on the environment through carbon footprint reduction. So there's lots more to do on this, with the governments and NGOs like RAP supporting to coordinate and lead the way and help make it simpler for business and consumers to do the right thing. So, on to a theme now of packaging with purpose. And packaging really does add value, and consumers are noticing this, and this is something we've, we've highlighted and pulled out um, through this uh, new survey in 2020. So in 2020, the survey asked consumers to identify the positive benefits that they saw packaging deliver. And the overwhelming response was the protection it delivers for the goods we buy, with 61% saying it protects items from getting damaged. This is also a positive benefit on sustainability, so that the scarce resources used to make the goods are not wasted. Waste reduction from well-designed packaging, driving sustainability, it's protection of goods throughout the supply chain and ensuring they can be consumed and used as intended, avoiding needless overproduction. So some further positives and drilling in um, within the protection theme. So within that, we saw that 47% rated hygiene as one of the top three benefits. With, and also 43% highlighted maintaining freshness and ensuring items remain tamper evident. The role of protection from packaging in a wider sense is therefore seen as a real benefit to consumers. And we believe this is a trend um, that's come about because of the challenges presented by COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in the, in, in, particularly the demand for this has been clear in the last year. And it would seem that it's particularly so in supermarkets with over 55% saying that COVID has made them either extremely or very concerned about the hygiene of goods from supermarkets. And this stems from the ability of others to handle the food and beverage items in the supermarkets before buying, which is a major concern. Um, and, others and other surveys have highlighted a trend to clean before green, citing consumers are buying whatever they can that is packaged in the safest way. So just drilling a bit further into that theme of, of protection and freshness. We can see that in essence, sustainability themes can be hooked back into many ways throughout the survey. An example of that is in 2018, RAP research showed that we threw away nearly 6.6 .6 million tonnes of household food waste in the UK, which is an horrendous amount. And packaging can be helped to reduce, can be designed well and help reduce this unnecessary waste by not only protecting the items in transit, but also by keeping it fresh once opened. Adding functionality such as resealability helps the pack to act as a functional store and, when done well, not only keeps foods fresh once opened, it also helps to answer um, a key call out of the survey, which was 20% of consumers are frustrated by packs that are difficult to close or reseal. So we've come on to our top worst and best packaging type as voted for by our research panel. So first off, the bad and the ugly, the worst rated packs for, <coughs> for 2020. And here you have a comparison, um, and you'll see more in the white paper against that in 2013. And once again, the issue of easy to access items came to the came as the four pack styles without easy opening devices hit number two and number three spots in frustrating packs emphasising the importance that people place on having packaging they can get into. The number one spot for most frustrating pack style was once again the hard plastic clamshell. It may protect goods through the supply chain and from theft, but it's almost the most unloved pack style and still after seven years, openability is still a major frustration with the clamshell. This year's survey also interestingly highlighted public perceptions towards plastic packaging, which is to be expected. Moving into the top 10 for frustrating packaging were plastic bags, cellophane and wrappers. Undeniably, plastic is suffering from a negative image, particularly those of plastic films. It's not seen as sustainable. 
and varying approaches to cro across the country to recycling solutions do not help this. So again, the, the support of government and NGOs to help bring alignment on labelling and recycling methods across the regions um, will be vital. And this time the good, so we'll end on a positive. In 2020, we asked uh, what packaging people were most pleased with. And the number one spot was taken by juice cartons with a screw cap and number two by cans with a ring pull. So these, the importance of being able to access packaging could also be seen from the results with the most pleasing pack styles. They've all got some opening mechanics on there. This demand for easy access and openability is clear, both from the packs that frustrate and from the ones that please. So in conclusion, our latest research has shown that an, an improving picture and the understanding of the positive role that well-designed packaging plays in protecting the goods we buy, but there is still plenty to do. Demand for better pack functionality, such as easy access, still exists. And it is clear that certain packs like clamshells are still disliked. Packaging can have a major positive impact on consumers and the environment. From the frustration of overpackaging to ensuring protection throughout the supply chain and preventing damage, demands have changed. Sustainability must be at the heart of all the packaging design and production. Changes in the way we live will always impact consumer choices and we need to be mindful and adapt to those. It will be exciting to see the improvements as the industry opens up the future and with the innovations to come. So thank you very much for uh, watching my presentation. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, on our white paper, which has lots more insights in there and, uh, and good information and data. Um, so um, that can be downloaded uh, from our website. Um, and those links will be shared around. Um, so thank you very much. I'll now hand back to Paul. Thank you very much, Ian. That was absolutely fascinating and really, really good to see some research that um, that looks at two points in time and, 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 and looks at various changes. So look forward to asking you some questions uh, very shortly. Um, but until then, let me just... Um, Share my screen and make sure I do it properly this time. Right, so hopefully um, you can just see the one slide. And um, so we're going to very quickly go through some more innovations before we take the Q and A at the end of the session. So. Uh, next up is a Brazilian coffee brand. Uh, I won't even begin to pronounce this in, in, in Portuguese. I think it's, well, I will begin because I'm going to try it. It's Cora Suez, which I think means hearts or three hearts. Uh, it's introduced a uh, new closure technology developed by um, uh, Apta. It promises to add convenience and functionality and will be introduced uh, in the Brazil market in uh, both 200 and 400 gram packs. Uh, the bonded aluminium to plastic technology has been used. The aluminium seal is welded to the cap plastic. Uh, after filling, it is bolted back into the pack to ensure the integrity of the contents. Uh, the elimination of a thread achieves a 16% lighter pack um, and is estimated an annual reduction of 40 tons of plastic uh, with the new packaging compared to the previous design. So not only offering an easier to use flip top closure, but also one that uh, achieves some sustainability objectives as well. Now, we looked at um, uh, an innovation in the first section about, around uh, Braille and helping blind and partially sighted. And here's a, another example. There's, um, believe it or not, um, almost 2 million people living in the UK alone with, with sight loss, um, and 360,000 of those are registered blind or partially blind, partially sighted. So an Italian, Italian startup has developed a, a new initiative for, for food labels to help the visually impaired uh, understand vital pack information as well as be able to engage with, with a brand. An inclusive packaging solution sees the development of a QR code prototype. When the code is scanned on a pack, it narrates, uh, in this case, olive oil packaging labels uh, on a user's smartphone. The narrative label uses a 30 second audio recording alongside a range of large sized images, text and videos to detail the product's contents. Um, a startup has developed the QR code prototype 
which is uh, compatible with both Android and uh, Apple systems. It is being trialed uh, with 20 local businesses to test usability and user acceptance. The narrative label needs to be merely scanned for it to generate its contents. The content can be constantly updated by the brand owner without needing to change the QR code on the pack. Um, and and the, one of the reasons for doing this was that they felt that braille labeling on pack could be cost prohibitive. Next, we have a, a US uh, innovation from PPI Technologies Group, um, who have agreed a collaboration with PopPack to help bring the latter's easy open innovation to market. The Easy Pop innovation uses an air bowl, which effectively, effectively uh, works as a, as a lever to open packs, including pouches. The consumer needs to pop the bubble to open the pack. A satisfying popping sound is apparently made when uh, with the pressing of the pack bubble, um, and littering and waste are reduced as there is no tear, uh, tear off piece to be recovered upon opening. PPI technologies are uh, assessing new as well as existing customers to introduce the the novel easy pop pack uh, feature. Um, packs can be opened with one hand, making it ideal for on the go consumption as well as those that struggle to open packaging. Easy pop is suitable for products packed on vertical and, and horizontal form fill and seal machines and can be combined with various reclosing and self closing features. So that's quite an interesting uh, innovation that's uh, quite, quite noticeable on shelf as well. Another US-based uh, business, uh, De Jong Associates has created a smart tablet dispenser. It has been designed to prevent misdosing or overuse and reduce prescription uh, opioid addiction. Uh, the solution dispenses prescription drugs in a controlled and time-bound manner based on the instructions of medical staff. The tablet dispenser is available um, at a pharmacy via a small deposit. After the tablets have been used, as prescribed, the unit is returned for the patient to either receive a refill or to get a deposit refund. The patient forfeits the deposit if the unit is damaged or not returned, obviously. The medication cartridge and delivery slide are modular and can be designed to accommodate a wide variety of tablet shapes and sizes. The pharmacist interfaces with the dispenser via a USB or wireless connection, and by entering a code, pharmacist can set the unit to dispense tablets at specific time intervals. It seems that as long as ketchup has been around, consumers around the world have struggled to efficiently dispense uh, the contents. Uh, it started with having to hit the bottom of glass bottles to get the sauce out. Um, now squeezy PET bottles use gravity to make life easier, but it's still not perfect for many. A change might be on the horizon with the development of a new, new source bottle design that is guaranteed to draw attention at the point of sale. The distinctive looking bottle has an unusual shape using a concertina to help dispense the product. The design allows uh, the consumer to squeeze out the desired quantity of source cleanly and easily and to look, and it looks like fun too. The size of the concertina section could be uh, designed to ensure that a predetermined amount of source is deposited uh, when the push mechanism is fully depressed. Uh, Grainer Packaging is behind the, the innovation um, and they've created the bottle via um, their Desbro initiative. Um, any standard closure with a flap is um, suitable for use as a bottle cap and fitting a silicon membrane is also an option which will limit the recyclability. The, the bottle itself can be uh, direct printed or decorated via a label or sleeve. So a really interesting new innovation for the ketchup market. And last up is um, German multinational personal care products giant Beersdorf, and they've announced an, a new innovation for their Nivea body lotion that makes dispensing much easier for consumers. The solution uh, rolls up like a tube of toothpaste to make it straightforward for users to evacuate the contents easily, as well as reduce the likelihood of residual product being inadvertently thrown away. The new Nivea natural, naturally good body lotion design incorporates uh, a bottle and cap and is reported to use 50% less plastic than the solution it replaces. The completely recyclable body lotion packaging design um, it's seen as a breakthrough with the new bottle, or is it a tube being very thin and has a specially shaped base to make it easy for consumers 
uh, to squeeze and roll. The thinner and lighter packaging has um, supply chain advantages as well, as it helps to optimize palletization, reducing transportation costs, as well as, well as um, consequent lowering of carbon footprint impact. And the bottle is made from 90% recycled content. So uh, this is a, a really interesting innovation that is also very much focused on delivering sustainability. Okay, so there are the innovations for today. Um, Barry, what questions do we have for Ian? Um, the first one was uh, a question about, have you looked into researching the end of life and ease of recyclability and how consumers feel about that at the moment? So we, um, we toyed with the idea. So no, we haven't. We kind of pulled it out within our, our seven questions on sustainability. Um, but the key thing is it, it, it's confusion in the marketplace with the terms that are used. So while we in the industry might understand terms like LCA and you know, carbon footprint and things like this, consumers don't really get it. So we've got to do some more work on that, I think, um, as an industry really, to help help simplify it. Um, because we know we want to compare and contrast the current pack with the new innovation we're going to bring to market. So we can simply say, yes, this is better for the environment. Um, but at this stage, we felt it was a bit confusing for con consumers. Yeah, I think really the, the next question, it could be for, for both Paul and um Ian, is why do you think paper-based solutions are not more top of mind given the huge sustainability attributes? But I think you've just sort of touched on it in there, Ian, that there is so much confusion about what is a positive environmental position uh, in terms of a material substrate choice and, and what isn't. And, you know, from my own uh, experience, you can normally create a, a positive um, story and a negative story for almost any type of material that you use. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, yeah, no, I definitely agree because, um, you know, from, you know, uh, you kind of off the top of your head, you think, yes, if it's, if it's bio-based, if it's paper-based, absolutely, they're going to have wonderful sustainability credentials. Um, but then understanding that, you know, the cradle to grave aspect through something like an LCA um, is really what shines a light on it. And yeah, and depending on where you cut that LCA off the analysis, you can spin the story. Um, so I think, yeah, consumers would probably prefer paper-based packaging, but that could a lot be influenced by the, the negativity around plastics um, from things like the, the, the Blue Planet. So yeah, there's a bit more to do on that across the industry. So we have kind of a, <laughs> a, uh, a common understanding and a common language to use. Yeah, it was, it was a debate that um, I've had frequently over the last few months is about how COVID has, has given us some opportunities to, to see if we change the world, whether people change their habits. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things which has sort of come to light in the last month is now um, within the UK, the problem of, of getting recycled uh, paper back into the recycling stream because corrugated board has moved from high street retailers to being delivered to individuals mm -hmm. and the system and the, uh, you know, it could be the individuals involved or just the, the, the curbside collection system is now being shown to be wanting because we're just not getting back the cardboard that we used to when it was going to retailers who were very disciplined and had um, good processes in place of capturing all of it. Um, we've now walked into a problem. So, you know, when we look at the pros and cons of, of one material versus another, I think a lot of time people look at a, a perfect situation where this material is recyclable therefore it will get recycled and unfortunately that's not always the case and then of course when you get lower recycling rates within material groups it negates some of the the benefits of the sustainability of that because its carbon footprint increases dramatically and what should we be looking at should we be looking at plastic pollution or should we be looking at carbon footprint and leading to climate change and I think until we um, have some very clear definitions of what are we are trying to achieve, I think there will still be masses of confusion about the type of materials which are more sustainable or less impactful in the environment than others. And 
we have to stop looking at these sort of perfect scenarios of if I make it out of this, then consumers will recycle it because the evidence would say that's not actually necessarily the case. Yeah. Yep. I don't know to add, Paul. Yeah, Ian, I've just got a quick question, uh, if I may. Um, a quick question to ask, maybe not a, a quick one to answer. Um, if you were to do the survey again in seven years' time, what do you think, obviously you're starting to see trends now, I mean, what, where, where do you think the market will be in 2027 in terms of some of the changes you're, you're seeing? Yeah. I think, what I say, I think, I think the theme around, I think, Use of scarce resources will be will be absolutely will be absolutely critical. So whether they're um, you know, whether they're bio based, whether it's you know it's paper, it's 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 oil derived, whatever it might be, those scarce resources are going to drive the decisions that are made. You know, at the consumer level, impacting on costs and and what their perceptions are about the the, the sustainability of of packaging. Um, but but also you know the the you know the, the resources that the the companies can we as companies and packaging producers can get our hands on as well. So I think that will be will be the key thing um, and that will will, will change. Um, so packaging will be really uh, you know very much probably reusable um, multiple times, uh, very very easily recyclable. You know maybe carbon capture, carbon negative, things like that. Okay, Ian, that's brilliant. Very good. I put you on the spot on that one, but you did very well in answering that. So thank you very much. Well, okay, we're up on, on the hour now. So we are conscious of people probably got other meetings to attend um, as, as the world seems to be in, in hourly online chunks at the moment. Um, so just to tell you to, uh, about our next um, webinar, which is uh, on Thursday, the 25th of February, again at 3 p.m. Uh, where we'll be um, talking uh, uh, Mondi's uh, Aegis paper, which is a fully integrated solution for functional barrier paper. So if you haven't signed up for that, please make sure you do. And more information uh, on our, um, our webinars um, on our website. So um, just like to thank Ian for his time uh, to talk through there. Uh, Central Tape's excellent um, consumer. Uh, research. Um, thank you as well, Barry, for, for the Q&A and um, telling me my slides weren't right. And um, thank you all for attending. And we look forward to you joining us again uh, at a future webinar in the not too distant future. As I said, you will be getting a recording of this uh, webinar uh, as part of the outputs for today. So thank you very much. <laughs>